Hello, welcome to the next video tutorial regarding the Ventus 5 Designer. In this video we will have a very rough and basic look at the Ventus Designer, how to work with it and we will create our very first content with the Ventus suit and play it out on our machine. The main goal really is to just build something with the software and get a feel of it. We will not explain things or look into detail a lot. Everything covered in this video will be featured a lot more detailed in later videos. Once you have installed the software suit, you should have some new apps in your start menu. Start the Ventus Designer and we can start off with creating a new project. In the window of the start screen you can see your recently opened projects. You can browse for other ones and you can create a new one. Let us take a quick look at that. Here you can type in your project's name, change its location, the author and copyright notice, Add a description, a category and an icon and you can define a resolution. Once you have changed everything to what fits your needs, you could simply click OK and Ventus creates and opens the project and automatically opens a new scene in the designer. This is how you can create your own project, but for this tutorial series you can use an already existing one to follow its videos more easily. We work in a project that you can download from the project browser like any other demo. Open the designer and tick this checkbox down here to show the tutorials and download the video tutorials project. Here we have some scenes for some of the videos in the series that are named accordingly. Most of those have an initial version that you can start to work with and a final version that show a possible result of the work done during the video. Open the scene for this video and we can start off. Right now you can already see the designer's workspace. This layout is very simple and you only have a renderer window on the right and one editor window on the left. And here you can add and change the layers of your current scene. If you want to add a layer you can simply click the plus on the top left of this window. For now let us add a Photoshop file as a layer structure. Once added you can simply click on this PSD icon to search for your PSD file and load it. Now let us work a little with the newly created layers. Pick a layer that was imported from your PSD and you can now add a simple effect like a blur. What you need to remember when working with Ventus layers is that the order is different from other compositing programs and is based on 3D engines. This means the topmost layer will be overwritten by all the layers below because the top layer is rendered first and the bottom layer is rendered last. There are roughly two different types of layers. The Photoshop layers we just created are 2D layers and simply consist of any kind of texture that you can lay out or add effects to. The other kind of layers are 3D layers that give full access to the 3D render engine of Ventus. And this is where the real fun starts. Let us go inside the already existing 3D layer by pressing the pencil icon. To actually edit the content of this layer you will need to switch to the logic view of the Ventus designer. Do so in the upper right corner of the main window. Now you can see the hierarchy, content and properties editor, with which you can edit your scene in a more flexible way than with the layers only. Now it is time to add some well-known Ventus notes to the scene. Do not get irritated by that note here, just draws the world that you can see in the renderer window and already does some work to make it look kind of good. Click into the hierarchy editor, press space and search for the geometry category. Here we can use a torus and place it inside the hierarchy. Now press space again and search for the axis inside the world category. You may place it in front of the torus and with it you are able to move and scale the torus. Let us move on to animate it. When switching to the animate window layout you will see the animation editor on the bottom of the designer window. Here you can see the main animation. We could now add the X position of the torus to this. Click on the axis and drag and drop the property name into the animation editor. Now you can see a new animation channel representing that property. To animate it you will need to add keyframes. Do so by moving the red slider somewhere in the timeline and pressing insert or this button up here. Now you can change the value of one of those keyframes to minus 5 and the other one to plus 5. The last thing to do to play the animation is pressing on the circle icon up here and clicking on the loop in the drop down menu. Now you can click the play button and the animation will automatically play in an infinite loop. This way you can animate every kind of property of your Ventus nodes. 
In the last step, let us add some interaction to this. Press space again and search for the interaction category and place a touch button in front of the torus. Now whenever we click it in the renderer window, the touch button node will notice that and fire an event. An event is an output property of the touch button node that can be bound to a method of another node. Let us animate the torus with that. Whenever you have a very simple animation, such as a rotation around an axis, you may instead of the main animation also use the mover node. Press space, search for the animation category and drag and drop a mover node into the content editor. On the bottom of the properties window, you can switch to the rotate clockwise preset. The mover now generates values between 0 and 360, so that we can use it for our rotation animation. Now drag and drop the Y rotation property of our torus axis onto the mover node. Now the torus rotates all the time, but we want it to only rotate once when the button was pressed. So click on the mover again, change the mode property to one shot and now you can bind the nudge method to the touch button single tab event. Now you can click on our torus and as a response it starts rotating around the Y axis once. This presentation is now ready to ship. We can now pack it in a way called Ventus Presentation so that it may be started with the Ventus runtime instead of the designer for the real production show. Also you may deploy it as such to your customer since there is no way to access its content like in your project on your machine and so all your scenes and assets are protected. Go to the scene menu and search for the export Ventus Presentation VPR option. Ventus will open a dialog to choose the destination of the VPR file and afterwards ask you which resources to take with it. In most cases you can just stick with the default selection. This is all, you now have a working Ventus presentation. Close the designer, go to the defined destination of our folder structure and double click the VPR file. Now the Ventus runtime starts and you are able to interact with it just like in the designer except you do not have the Ventus Designer user interface. This takes us to the end of this tutorial. You just created your first Ventus presentation. We walked through some of the most important features of Ventus very fast so that you get an idea of what you can achieve and how working with Ventus feels like. We will have a deeper look into the software in the next videos, so be sure to stick to the series and also watch the other videos to get a real idea of how to use Ventus to help you and your visions to really stand out.